So, Aladino, mm -hmm. these bulkhead beams mm -hmm. are actually the last short beams that we've planned to replace. Yay! What's up, everybody? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was unexpected. Changing up the game, doing YouTubes like everybody else. Yo, oh, my this Lord. is what's up today. Yeah, there's a reason we don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to boring normal. Boring normal. I'll throw some slow piano music on there and a little poetic <laughs> narration. Welcome back to our traditional sailboat refit where we once again battle perfectionism to slowly plod onwards towards our dreams. All right, what have we got going on today, Aladino? The last two short beams. In the last episode, we installed nearly all of our new short beams, except for a few. And these are these two here. And I left this until now because this is the worst bulkhead, which also needs repair. Bulkheads are really important structural components of a boat, and having a partially rotten one isn't good news. So we had to cut out the rot and replace it with good wood. The bulkhead will then get sandwiched between new beams on either side, helping to stiffen and strengthen it. I have removed the beams. The next thing that I will tackle is determining how much is rotten. Maybe actually I show you on the other side where I have made a similar repair already. But one can see that I have repaired this corner here and also this one over here. They are both fairly similar. Not only was there a hole here for the electrical wiring, but especially the top half here was rotten. And now it shall be good again. I have only made a butt end and maybe this is not best practice if it was anywhere else. Um, then I, I believe it would be much better to stagger the plywood or to have a scarf. But instead, imagine that here, the, the part above this line, this much, is all sandwiched by two beams. And then there is only this little triangle here, and maybe we'll have a hole again for the wiring. So this is really no big deal. And this was a much easier and faster repair. So that looks good, it looks good to me. Now onto this next bulkhead repair. At first glance, the rot here appeared to be more severe than the others, but to tell for sure, we had to just start cutting away all the soft wood. made the initial cut smaller than the discoloration, uh, hoping that it wouldn't be that bad. And actually, exactly where I've made the cut, the wood is in good condition. Around the beam shelf, it was really rotten through. And from the top, as you can see, it all um, crumbled away. But here and here, we have solid wood again. Good, so, so it's actually a small repair area again. Yeah, so I think I will make it, I will tackle it like I did all the others. So just a simple method. Exactly. And that is also because I do have a little piece of three quarter inch plywood. Just a little one, I hope it's going to be enough even. Only one way to find out if the little piece of scrap plywood we had would be big enough to make this repair. Aladino started by making a cardboard template of the area. Thank you. 
Aladino also got his morning boat yoga in. We take health and fitness seriously here at Magic Carpet. Done! <laughs> Template is done anyway. No, we're done done. Oh yeah, you're just going to leave the cardboard in the bulkhead? Uh, maybe I should double it up. There's not much on this side. <laughs> Isn't cardboard made from paper and paper made from wood? So oh yeah, sure. It's a good plywood substitute. Now downstairs to check if we had enough plywood for the patch. Is it going to work? You've got a, You have just enough plywood, hey? In this scene, Aladino is brushing dust off his jigsaw with a special little paintbrush he keeps in the case just for that purpose. And then he's laughing at me, rolling my eyes, lovingly of course, behind the camera. You can take the Swiss out of Switzerland, but you can't take the Switzerland out of the Swiss or something like that anyway. Now it's time to prep the area. After more sanding and more fine Dremel work, the surface was prepped not only for the patch, but also for the beams to be epoxied in place. Now it's time to wet the plywood. You always want to wet the wood before it's being glued in place. So now after just soaking the wood with the clear epoxy, I go mix in 403, which is the cotton, and a little bit of wood dust. You know, one thing that I find so interesting about when you get stuck into a refit like this is that something which might seem terrible and like the end of the world if it happened on your boat under normal circumstances, here it's just like par for the course. So it's like, oh, the bulkhead's rotting, no worries, that'll be a few hours this afternoon. Whereas imagine when you're out sailing, you're, the boat's loaded up, you've got a destination in mind, and then you realize that a section of your bulkhead is rotted. And it's such a bigger ordeal to get access to the bulkhead, to get the tools set up, to be living on the boat at the same time. And I think that that is just a good example and reminder of why we are doing all of this. Another thing done, and now tomorrow I will sand it smooth, and then we will put in the last two short beams here. Rain or no rain, we couldn't care less in our amazing workshop. So we are about to get ready to install the last two bulkhead beams and it's these two right here. Maya has sanded all the surfaces so they're matte and it's ready for varnish and I have buffed up the surfaces that are going to be glued now a little more because um, 
to get a good mechanical adhesion it is good to have it a little harsher um, than just scotch bright i have taped in the boat i have taped right here mm -hmm. so now it's time to mix some epoxy and get them in place and of course, more epoxy. I wonder how many hours I'll have spent stirring epoxy at the end of this project. Perhaps I don't want to count. Now I double check, uh, number 11, number 11 starboard. Let's start with that one. 11 starboard. Double check, is that 11 starboard? Uh, if the camera focuses, yes, 11 starboard. Good. Let's go. And I find it helps so that it doesn't fall that you keep rotating it evenly. And now I'm really liberal with it. And we'll do the cleanup at the end when it's squeezing out. Having it more liquid means that of course it's going to be more difficult to work overhead. But I prefer to have it on the wet side than on the dry side because then there is some epoxy which can get absorbed. And as we go along, we learn many things. For the short beams, we needed one pump of epoxy and instead for the bulkhead ones, since this big area needs epoxy too, it's three pumps. Isn't that a precious bit of information right there? <laughs> Subscribe, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, many times I wonder what's the personal benefit that you can take from a video to apply to your projects. But on the other side, so many times, it's not even for that. And like, like Leo Golden on Tally Ho. I mean, isn't that just unbelievable and incredible what he's doing? But it's not like everybody's going to have a project like this in the workshop and needs all the hints and how to do all those things. Well, it's entertainment too. Yeah, it's entertainment too. That's I mean, right. uh, that's why you guys like when we suffer in sand. <laughs> I'll make one episode one hour long just about sanding. <laughs> Don't you worry, guys. When I'm making these videos, I try to make it more of a story because that's the thing that interests me. But I can't always do it. And sometimes it's just sticking epoxy on a bulkhead and that's all that's going on. Yeah. <laughs> more epoxy on the bulkhead and more boat yoga to achieve it. The story of the deck beams kept slowly plodding forward. Eleven. Yes. Ready? Mm -hmm. Nice. So it's in place now, hey? Yep. All done. Uh, now the screw goes in. I put a few screws in from this side. I and the carriage it. bolts, of course. And well, at the very end. Yeah. The beam also got fastened into place with screws going through the bulkhead. One more screw through this trim piece into the end of the beam, and then time to clean up the epoxy and repeat the whole process on the other side. So, Aladino. Mm -hmm. These bulkhead beams mm -hmm. are actually the last short beams that we've planned to replace. Yay! And you know, I think at the beginning we were sort of hoping to not have to replace all these deck beams. But also now that we have, isn't it so satisfying? Oh, it is. I mean, the only thing is uh, that time is pressing. Yeah. If it wasn't for time, there's so many things on a boat where I would like to go full on. 
Leo Golden myself, but this is not the boat and this is not the kind of project we do. Um, we really want to strike a good balance. We want to show reality of we want to get sailing also. Yeah. Rather than making um, a boat that is Worthy ready to go in, onto every festival. Exactly. Yeah. And I have to learn about that, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, the past few years in Switzerland um, have just polished a perfectionist in me and I have to learn to balance that out now and to see all the imperfections and say, that's it. Pass me the beam. Here we go. Thanks. Oh no, I touched it with my greasy hands. In Switzerland, that's a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy not following very well. Well, I certainly appreciate how your training was done in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Me too. But I do have to learn to balance it now, which is not easy either. I see well, all the imperfections and I see all the... But knowing where the imperfections are and understanding which ones are okay and which ones are not okay, yeah. I think that's a good thing. So it's good to have a bit of the balance. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's your time for the wedges. Oh, okay. Stop. And we are one step closer. One step closer. Towards the dream. The dream. The dream. That is reality. That's true. Life isn't too bad right now either, is it? No. Not at all. I heard there are spare ribs tonight. Mm. Oh, there are spare ribs tonight. Or ribs. I don't know what the spare part means. <laughs> but there should be some spare for us, yes. <laughs> and so, with that, our bulkhead beams were in place, meaning that the short beams are now officially done. The balance between perfectionism and practicality is still one we're trying to find, as we get increasingly itchy to get out sailing, but also staunchly unwilling to cut big corners. Refitting an old boat is a slow process. It's something done out of love and dreams rather than logic and good sense. But we were slowly getting there. And I can say with certainty that on the day Magic Carpet 2 launches, we will be glad to know with certainty that this is a boat built to last. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for commenting. Um, ask a question, uh, drop a like. Uh, we really appreciate you following along on this journey. I, I am really happy <laughs> doing this and I hope uh, you are too following along. Extra, extra big thank you to all our patrons, uh, the big family that we have created. It is really amazing to be able to do this and have the backup from you guys. Uh, an extra, extra big thank you to these names appearing on the screen right now uh, for making sure that uh, Magic Carpet productions keep being produced. <laughs> I have to practice this. <laughs> all right, and now we hand the camera back to Maya. Nope, that's all. Bye-bye, <laughs> folks.